Hey there, if you liked the video, please click that like button. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, I wanted to just make another entry on our house building project. We're doing granite countertops and I want to do an overview. What I'm going to do right here, I want to do a seam fill. Do the seam together. And I've uh, leveled the tops up so that when they're together, they're really level. And so now we're ready to epoxy them together and uh, I've uh, sanded the edges just a little bit, just broke them so that they're smooth. I, I cut these tops with a skill saw and a diamond blade and with water and because of our circumstance I had to cut them from the top. So they, this cut was just a little bit of chatter because I'm just breaking those edges a little bit with some wet dry sandpaper, about 1500. And if it's a rougher than that'll cut then use a little heavier paper. So what we're going to do is uh, have a, an epoxy compound and a hardener green tape. I've made myself a little place for mixing. Scrap granite on the dirt. This granite is a salt and pepper kind of color. So I'm gonna mix up uh, three, uh, three areas, three groups of color pots. And I'm gonna put them all in there to give a more of a variegated look rather than anything that would just be a, a solid line of color. So I'm gonna place three groups. And one will be kind of trying to get the creamy white color and another one will be a little darker color and then, and then also some black. The black is the least I need volume-wise. A little bit for the long way to cut out the black dots. So I've got three groups and we're gonna mix it to color first and then after the color set add the hardener. Or slip this piece into place and do it down with some silicone to the deck underneath. There's a plywood deck underneath this, this granite. This piece has already been moved and it's in place. You just have one, one to slide in. It, done it all the way through on all my seams. I've set one and then, and then left one to slide in. So, uh, do a little colors here. I don't know what to call it, but it's kind of a gray color, kind of a gray. And then, <coughs> the last one will be, and I set the colors kind of aside, because again, they drag them in as I need more, rather than just going for it. Start with the white, and I just am using a nice pretty knife, and I'm just gonna mix it into this epoxy. And again, you wanna do this before you add the hardener, you know, follow the instructions on the, the product that you have. That's getting you a kind of a creamy white color that seems to be working pretty good. And you wanna kind of clean your knife off a bit between things. And this one, I'll take a little of that color. Particularly warm here. I'm gonna move this out of the way. The other side here, you won't be able to see it anymore. But, and uh, so it's a little, it's a little chilly right now. It's winter time. So right before I uh, mix that hardener into my three jobs epoxy, I'm gonna lift this up. Put a little bit of silicone under here. Kind of glue it to the deck. And this silicone will give you a little. Notice there I had tape down. I just did that to level the seam. I'm putting tape on the low side of the situation to the point where it really got nice. And that worked pretty good. And look, it's, you know, I'm using it as a shim, several layers of it. And uh, I could just put them on one at a time and check it, get it right where I wanted it. Right now I'm mixing up, you probably can't see this, but I'm just mixing in the partner into the three piles of epoxy and I want to be kind of moving right along there and I'm wiping my putty knife in between each each pile of epoxy so not to ruin my colors and then I'm gonna start with the lighter color and I'm just gonna kind of move some of that in there along that edge kind of in just a random way I'm very scientific along there then I'm gonna go to the next the next darker color and uh, even just totally mix it but just kind of blend it in there like a little bit of peanut butter on a cracker and uh, as far as pretty good the, uh, the lighter color 
seem to not show as much at the end of the day. Darker colors are just to kind of give it that realism. And then as the last thing then, just a little of the black, because it has the black specks in this granite, and I'm just gonna put a few of them in there. I feel like that guy that paints on TV, you know, he talks to the trees he makes, but that's about it. And then uh, with that, then I'm gonna Get the thing up on my tape and then just slide it in and let it all push out along the length of the thing. And I'm gonna get a little couple. Put it over there. And I'm looking along there and just making sure that, that it got cracked all filled up. I want you want it kind of above initially there. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's it's you can see it in the video, but it's all on above. And then I'm just gonna let that sit just for a little bit. I wanna kind of verify that we're even, which you know nothing will change. And that's a real subjective thing. It's really hard that does you know you might be even one area and the other area's off. You can hook a fingernail on it, so I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't. This, you know, of course does not bend. It's kind of, you have to just, uh, I'm sure that guys that do this professionally have all kinds of other tricks, but this, on this, this is your do-it-yourself version. And what I'm doing now is I've had, I got a razor blade and I'm just cleaning up some of the excess, starting to get some of it off of there, just real gently. That I'm just kind of doing a slicing motion as I go along with this razor blade. So not to do like a snow plow, but more I'm just cutting it off, you know, to make it a, a pretty smooth. And just, uh, I see a spot there that looks like an awful lot of white. So I'm gonna put a little of my tree back in there and gently working with it. But just slice that off of there. And this stuff is super sticky, jump on you. So kind of got to think ahead on some of that. See I have an area there that a lot of, a lot of white. So I just took a little of my black and put a few more dots in there. Even that out a little bit more. And now I'm just gonna run along the edge of it and, and just get up the bulk of it. Let's clean up later. One on the left and right side of the crack. I'm not running over the top of the, the seam. I'm just on each side of it, just getting the excess because and I gotta scrape it off. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna give my top just one more little bump. And that will bring it up once again. And then I'm gonna let it dry for a while. So we'll stop now with the camera and we'll come back in a, a little bit. Okay, probably been about 20 minutes and the epoxy's setting up pretty, pretty well. So before it gets really, really hard, I want to take and just trim that seam again and scrape it a little bit. And what you can do is just kind of watch the progress of the epoxy that you mixed on your mixing board and it'll give you a good idea where you're at. So again, I'm just, just going to cut with a slicing motion and you can just see that little bulge that we left just slice off and you can see that uh, getting the is on my razor blade. If you just go straight through it, it can chip a little bit and your epoxy joint can get a little rough. It's not horrible but the technique I found this the cleaner, smoother to the epoxy itself. Got it off of there. Kind of have a supply of these razor blades there. You can hand you do this and then just run along the side again and clean up any residue. I found that to a point uh, a lacquer thinner Cut this and clean it up a little bit, but only to a point. As it gets harder and harder, it becomes impervious to that. So you want to scrape off all you can because then you're down to possibly just sanding what's left. Don't forget the front of your uh, a little more on these countertops. I, I found a uh, material man in our area in a major city that sold these, and, and they're known as um, prefab countertops. They have uh, a finished edge on uh, two edges, one long edge and one end, and they're cut to 26 inches in width. So they fit on a standard cabinetry, uh, real nice. All you have to do is just cut these, your miter seams. Uh, and I, I accomplished that by just, like I say, I had a skill saw that I put a, a good diamond wet blade in and I took a, a small uh, aquarium hose, uh, you know, an aquarium pump. So they would put water right on the front of that blade and uh, took you know, a lot of precautions to not get shocked. You wanna do that at your own risk with uh, using a GFI breaker and, and keeping the water out of the motor, of course keeping the electrical cord up out of the water, things like that. It was a, uh, I had some help. It was a, definitely a two-man job. And then clamping a straight edge on the uh, granite and running the, the edge of the saw along that straight edge and just moving very slow made a, made a pretty decent cut. Probably for me, it was a, a, at least a third of the cost of having them done professionally. So for your, you 
great do-it-yourselfers. And again, I, you know, this is a probably skill level relatively difficult, so I wouldn't just recommend it to everybody. But if you if you have a skill set that takes them like it on, it's beneficial financially. And there are a few other uh, videos on uh, YouTube that are do-it-yourself type folks that are uh, pretty good success. I think. Yeah, that's the story of the tops. After this, I uh, as the as the epoxy uh, finishes out, then I just continue sanding with wet wet dry paper. 1500 and then 2000 and uh, on the surface of this it uh, in my situation it, it seemed to polish it up and remove any film and then at the end I, I uh, attached one of these buy these on Amazon or you know, this your material man. but it's a 3000 polishing disc and I just attached that to my orbital sander uh, does not work on a high-speed grinder I tried that and it kind of made it heated it up too much. So this orbital sander spins at a, a little slower RPM of course and puts it just kind of finished polish on it. But with the 2000 bit paper you I'm surprised how shiny that makes it. It, it really brings it back. So that's all I do to finish up and uh, I just spend a little time on the, on the polishing of the joint. I like I've had a, a pretty good result. So that should uh, help somebody out if they want to take something like that on. Or just uh, plan ahead, have your, your, your method all dialed in because the epoxy does not wait for anybody. If you fail, I did one joint uh, experimenting and, and I did not like it. It was uh, too dark, it was just a, turned out to be a, a stripe. So I took a utility knife like this and I, I drug it back out a little bit and I made some uh, new mix of epoxy and I just you know troweled it into the crack again, let it set and was able to uh, you know change the color of it and make it more of a you know, fit my situation. Again, this is a, I, I think, a pretty, this uh, salt and pepper kind of granite is forgiving. I've seen some beautiful stuff that uh, I don't know how they do it. These guys are just artists, but they, uh, if you are going after that caliber of granite and stuff, then you, you can know what you're doing or, or hire someone that does. They, uh, they can do some pretty stuff. But anyhow, worth a shot. And uh, if, like I say, if it, you can always you can uh, dig it back out of there more carefully and, and, uh, and add a little bit more in. Basically, that joint is, is already glued together and so it's stable. So with that, I'll, I'll uh, conclude. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. You can check out some of my other videos right here. And if you want to, you can subscribe by clicking here.